Hi everyone, this is Lori from The Crafting Auntie coming back to you this week with a new project. Um, I have been toying with the idea of creating a criminal file and um, I decided to kind of follow the style of journal for the, cr uh, for the criminal file to be based on one that I had made last year out of an old Pendaflex. Um, I do have a tutorial uh, how I actually constructed this, but it is just based off of a old Pendaflex like this. It's a hanging file. And then in that tutorial, I give you how I cut it and um, scored it and everything. So I'm going to link that below. So I have already prepared this to begin. And so what I wanted to do today is strengthen the inside. I want to do the spine. And then I want to add paper to the front and back. And I have gotten this paper. It's a parchment paper, a vintage. I got it off of Amazon. I will link this be below for you as well. And I thought it would look good on the outside of the cover. So I'll do the cover front and back out of this. But the spine, I have this washi tape. Very vintagey. It's not about uh, criminal or prisoner, but I thought it would go okay with this. So I'm kind of thinking... Yeah, I think so. And it's just going to be showing on the spine, on the inside, and on the outside. So, what I want to do first is go ahead and work on the spine. So, the spine itself is about an inch. And I've just used the folds of the Pendaflex. There are folds in here about every quarter inch. And so, I just am using uh, enough to make it a one-inch spine. It's kind of hard to see on here, but you can kind of see the folds on the back. So that's what I'm doing. So this is going to end up being my spine right here. So if that makes any sense. So I have two pieces that I've already cut just a little bit smaller than uh, one inch. And I'm going to glue these two pieces together to stiffen it more. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is glue these two together. Hope everyone's having a good day. And before I really get started here, thank you for all my new subscribers. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. And hopefully these uh, videos will inspire you into some new and different projects. Um, I've just been having a good time creating different things. And um, so welcome. Welcome all my existing subscribers. Thank you for all your comments and all of the um, likes. I mean, it's been really great. So thank you so much. So I wanted to make sure that I did say that to all of you. So let's see. The first thing I want to do is cover this to go on the inside. And I'm just going to use this washi, which is wide. It's more than I need, but it's okay. I was looking at all the different washies I had, trying to come up with something that I thought would go with this. So this was the closest I could get. So I need enough just to be able to fold it over and cover the spine. So I'm just going to cut this off. Set this aside because I am going to put it on the outside also. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue also because I want to make sure that this stays on. I'm not sure how sticky this washi is. So I'm going to add the glue onto my spine itself here. And I am just using art glitter glue. I find um, this one works the best and my projects, I really want them to hold together for long term. So that's why I use a lot of art glitter glue. Let's see. I want to see if I can get this centered. So let me just lay this down, hopefully, best I can. And then let's take this piece and flip it over. And I'll just try and center it. And it's not going to be seen, so, but I just want it to still look nice. Okay. I just don't want things crooked. And then I'm just going to fold this over 
add some more glue. And let's fold this over. Just like that. And I'm just going to trim this off because it's not going to make any difference. And if I fold, well, I could fold it over. Let's do that. Let me just cut them on an angle. And we'll just glue it down. We'll just add more glue because the washi um, doesn't stick well to itself, which is why I added the other glue. And then this doesn't have any stick on it at all. So we will just glue that down. And the spine I just used a thin chipboard that I have and again I just cut it at just a hair just a little bit under an inch so I would say like seven eighths of an inch and then the length and this is going to be based on how you design yours but my length was about eight and a quarter so about that long. If you decide to make yours the same size or it's just a little bit different, um, then just measure it to whatever length that you have. Okay, so I have that. And that, that is going to go right in here, making sure that I can still bend the pages. But before I do that, I want to add another layer of washi here and on the outside. So I'm going to pull this out again. And I'm going to need quite a bit this time. I do want to fold it over the top. So let me see. Can be kind of tricky so about like that a little bit more and then I'm just going to cut this as straight as I can and then on the other side is where I'm going to start so this is the outside now and I want to just cover the spine with this and also using uh, some of the art glitter glue. So this is going to go over quite a bit. So I'm just going to put it all over this spine on the outside, including the area that is not folded for the spine. But it's just going to be kind of protection and reinforcement on this. And then we'll just line this up. I'm going to stand up for this just to make sure I can get it straight. And I want to put this on first because when I go to put the front paper on, I want to be able to put it over. So I may have to trim this down here because I want to make this even, as even as I can. I think that's pretty good and I'll just do some trimming. It's not the easiest way of doing it. Let me just fold the pockets under so I can get a nice trim on this. Oh yeah, it can be kind of uh, cumbersome getting things twisted around to where you can actually make a nice cut. Okay, so there we go. All right, and then we're just going to flip it over, and I'm going to do the same thing and glue it down here. Now on this side, it's going to be upside down, but it's on the inside. Most of this is going to get covered, so it's not going to make any difference. So I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm just gluing. And press this down. And you may have washi tape that's a little different than mine. 
so you may not have this issue. Now I'm going to just fold the pockets backwards so I can get a nice cut on this side as well. Not easy. But once we get this part done, then we can move on. Okay, there we go. We got it. All right. So this is our outside, which is right side up. And then our inside is upside down. But we are going to be putting our spine on here. And then when I cover the inside, you are not going to see it. So I just want to make sure that I can move this. So I'm going to put the glue liberally all over this piece. So I want to make sure that it stays on good. With washi tape you have to be careful and glue it really well because it is kind of slick and you want to make sure that it's not going to come up. And then let me just turn it sideways so that I can make sure I get it in the right spot. So I don't have too much time to move it. So I want to do it as quickly as I can. I'm making sure both sides will clear it. So I'll just do it one more time. One more time and then I'm just going to hold this down and just make sure it adheres well just like that all right so we have our spine so There is the spine to our journal. So we've got that. Okay. So, yeah. This, I'm going to clamp this because and let this dry really well. So let me just grab some of these just so that I can clamp this on good and let it just continue drying. And meanwhile, we will work on the rest of it. So I have already cut some pieces that will go oops on the inside here so you see you won't see much of that washi now that's upside down so these pieces that i put on the inside and then these that will go here so my pieces for the inside are five and three eighths by eight and an eighth so there's two of those, and then these are six inches by three and an eighth, and they're going to go here. And this is reinforcing the journal. So because I have rounded corners, I have my corner punch, so I am going to round the corners so that they will match up nicely in here. It won't be perfect, but... Uh, you know as close as we can so that one will go there and then this one I have to do the corners here and here because we don't need it here and then on this one we're going to do this side and this side and then here we're going to do again this side and this side so all the rounded corners will match up. Now while I'm letting this continue to dry, I'm going to go ahead and distress all of these pieces. And I have ground espresso. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All around the edges, and especially on the corners. I want this to look old vintage criminal file something that's been around for a while um, so for some of the inside of the criminal file 
I have found some digitals from Marty Joe Printables, I believe it is, on Etsy. I will link them below, or at least her shop, and you can take a look at that. And if it's something that you want to get, you can. So, also, I did find some digitals that I'll be using pieces of from Tracy Fox. And um, I'll link that kit also below, in case you're interested and see what she's got. And I'm just using pieces of it. Um, the digital file that I found from Marty Joe is almost, it's a, it looks to me like it's very, very old, early 1900s, but real prison records. So I have picked um, a particular prisoner in there because there was some multiple documents for different prisoners. And so I have picked a prisoner, but I am not going to use the photo that is in the criminal file. It's just not as clear as I want, and so I'm going to use a Tim Holtz, and we're just going to create our own. And uh, so that, that's kind of my plan. That's where I'm going with this, just in case you're interested. So I'm just going to finish adding this on. On the inside covers here, on either side of this, I, I don't know what I want to add on there. So I'm thinking of just doing a little bit of stenciling for right now. And if it changes, then I'll worry about it then. So I have this stencil. This is by Stamperia, and I thought it would go good with this. So on the front, I'm just going to add not uh, very strong, but just kind of add a little bit of this on here, just to kind of give it a little background. Well, you can't really see it. Let me get my brush, and we'll try that. Uh, using the brush and let's see if I can get a little better color. Okay, I got my brush out. So let's try this. See if we can't get a little bit more color in here. So we couldn't really see much of anything. That's much better. Much better. And I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just using parts of this. Just to give it something. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty light, but I don't want it real strong. So just, just something adding to it. I like this stencil. Kind of goes well with this. It's got all kinds of different things on it. Um, let's see. Let me put a little bit right here. Okay. Um, do just a little bit more right here. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but got a little bit on there, and that's all I'm looking for. So we got that done. Now what I want to do is these I'm not going to cover because what I end up what I want to end up putting on these flaps is going to be some of the um, like the the criminal's ID card and maybe some information about them. So I'm going to leave these as they are because I will be making very close to ID cards that what I have done um, recently in these crafty fun sessions. So let's see how this is going to look. Yeah, I like that. I like it. Okay, and I've cut these just a little bit smaller because we want to make sure that we can close this. And then same with these flap ones. So the flap ones, I didn't put anything on because I do want to add ID information, maybe fingerprints. I'm not sure how it's all going to flow together, but we'll get there eventually. So um, what I do want to do is add some more distressing around the edges. 
mostly just around the edges. And most of it will be on the outside, but I did want to get a little bit on here. And I may add some more on before I actually get things glued in place when I start actually adding things onto the inside. But on the outside, I definitely want to distress more. Even though it's going to have paper on the front of it, I want these edges to be darker. So we'll just use the ground espresso all the way around. So I'm going to do that. In addition to that, I'm going to stitch all the way around the main. Let's see. I think I'm going to stitch all around here, here, all around here, here, and down across here. But not on the pockets. I think I'll leave the pockets as they are. So I'm going to go ahead and ink. And I'm going to go ahead and do the stitching, and then I will be back. Okay, I have finished distressing, and I have stitched all around it. I did not stitch the pockets at all, because I'm pretty sure those are going to be covered up. So I did stitch on either side of the spine, and all the way around, and uh, around the um, outside of the pockets. So that part is done and let me just, I want to keep some of the threads on here but I'll just trim them down just a little bit. And I used a darker brown so that it would show up. And trying to keep with a vintagey look. So that's what I did. I don't know if you like strings hanging. I do. I like that look. So that's the outside. And this is the inside. So on the inside now we want to go ahead and glue on our panels. And that will give it the strength. So that's basically why we're doing this, is to strengthen this. Because Pendaflex is not that sturdy. Um, unless you get an actual Pendaflex file folder, which has compartments. And that's not what I wanted to, to do, the look I wanted to get. So I'm just going to reinforce this. And that way it's sturdy. So get my threads out of here. And line this up, making sure it's even, a little bit of a border. And we can still move the spine, so that's good. And we can still move our pocket. That's what we're going for. Make sure it's good and secure. And do the other side the same way. Okay. And get this one glued down the same way. A little bit of a border. Trying to keep it even each side. And I want to make sure this can move and this can move. All right. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So we have our inside covered. Now let's do the two flaps. I am still trying to get a vision in my head as to what this is going to ultimately look like. But um, hopefully <laughs> it'll come out close enough to what I, I think I'm envisioning in my head. 
I'll show you, um, which is not going to be in this video, but one of the videos coming up, I'll show you the pages that I have printed off. And it's try to find one of the criminals that had quite a few of the pages in these digital kits. And I found one that had quite a few. So I will show you those in just a second. Oops. Okay. This poor dangle gets on and off of this glue so much. Every once in a while I gotta put it back together. It's something that I made some time back. Okay, so and then what will happen is these will end up getting glued in as pockets, of which I'm not going to do yet. And then these will come over like this. So when your journal is closed, it looks like this. So it's a nice size. We are looking at helps if you get the uh, ruler the right way. So about eight and a quarter by five and an eighth. So it's a nice small size, and that's what I was looking at. Okay, so what I found, what I did for the pages that I want to put in this. So I'm using the same paper. This digital kit has multiple um, criminals on it, and this one is called Lee Hayes. So Lee Hayes has quite a few pages, and I am not sure yet. I'm sure I'm going to be trimming them. What's nice about it, it's already done on the other side. So I found these papers on the paper itself on Amazon. But he's got all kinds of different records in here. And so the, this is the gentleman I'm going to use. And I will also create an ID card, but I'm going to be using this Tim Holtz. Um, this is Photomatic. He looks like a prisoner to me. So I want to change the face. So he will end up being um, the prisoner. Uh, I have more of these pages on the printer, so those will be on the inside. On the outside, I do want to um, add that same paper. So I have a sheet here, and I want to just, just cover right up to the spine, just, just leaving a little bit of a border. So let's see, I'm going to go ahead and do that on this video. So let's mark this. And right about there. So I'm going to cut two pieces. Trim this down first off. Okay. And then this piece. So we're looking at just one mark over five and a quarter. And let's make sure that this is going to be right. Yeah. So one mark over, what did I say? <laughs> I'm going to make sure. One mark over five and a quarter. So one mark over five and a quarter. Let's make that straight. I think I want to do it this way. Okay. All right. So this one will go on here. Just lay this flat. Get the paper cutter out of the way now. And let's see. I'm kind of thinking I want it like this with this grungy border like that. But I do need to round two of the corners. So some of that will come off, but I think it will still be okay. It's still showing up. And then we'll grunge it up a little bit more. 
on this side and the top. So let's do this round these corners. That way it all matches. This is something I printed on the other side. And I don't want to waste the paper. So I'm going to use it for this. Okay, let's go ahead and grunge up this top part. Won't be as dark, but at least it's got some grunging on it. and also down this side. Kind of give it that same kind of a grungy look, but maybe not quite as dark. I don't want to go with black because this is really more of a brown, a very, very dark brown. So if I could just get enough ground espresso on here, I think I'd be happy. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's do the same thing on this side. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So we can glue these down, making sure I'm not at my spine. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, Get the glue, and let's glue this down. I printed one of the documents on here, but it was just a little bit too large. I needed to uh, scale it down some, so instead of wasting the paper, we're going to use it. And I think this will grunge up the outside of this to look more vintagey along with the rest of it. At least that's my plan. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. I never know on a project. I've had this in my mind to do, concept kind of in my mind. But until I actually do it, never know how it's going to turn out. I don't know if you're the same way as me, but that's kind of, I kind of vision it in my, my head and then trying to get it um, in reality are two different things. But I try to work through each, pro each part of the project and get it to where I want it. Okay, I'll get this one on. And I know some of the stitching is going to be covered, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. All right, so this is going to be what the front and the back look like. And my plan is, so these will go in here, and I don't want to glue these in yet because I'm not sure what I want to do for on the inside, but this will be on the outside. And then what I've done, which I won't put on on camera because it'll be very tedious, is I have cut out some of the letters, again, out of the craft uh, Tim Holtz paper that you can sand. And it's going to say criminal case file. And I'm still not sure what else I am putting on the front. So I'm gonna work through that. So for today, this is what I wanted to get done. So we are ready to continue on in the next video. And that will be on Wednesday. And we will probably be working on the ID card and some um, of the records and stuff that are going to go inside here before we actually put the papers in. And the papers I'm going to do the same way as I did my Arthur. It's going to be with elastic, so they'll be removable. Additions can be made into it. And um, that way, in case I want to do some work on some of the pages or projects in there, I can do that. So for now, this is the start of our criminal case file. So, I will see you in the next video on Wednesday where we will tackle another portion of this. Hopefully you'll join me. And again, thank you all for coming along with me. Thank you for all the new subscribers, the existing ones. Love uh, seeing all your comments. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it very much. 
You guys have a great day. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.